From the mysterious Moai of Easter Island to the detailed carvings of Gobekli Teep, we discovered something surprising. Ancient structures challenge our understanding of the past. They include the Puma Punka complexes and the enormous stones of the Baalbek Trilithin, each weighing 900 tons. These constructions challenge our beliefs about ancient human abilities. But how were they built? We explore these mysteries and discover how these seemingly impossible to build prehistoric structures were made. Number 1. In the greenery of County Meath, Ireland, lies Newgrange, a Neolithic tomb older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids, built around 3200 BC. It is part of the Brunaboyne complex, a World Heritage Site which also includes the tombs of Noth and Douth. Newgrange is a large circular mound surrounded by stones engraved with megalithic art. The structure measures 85 meters wide and 12 meters high, and was built with approximately 200,000 tons of earth and stone from far-flung locations such as the Morn Mountains and Wicklow. In the center of Newgrange there is a stone passage leading to a cruciform chamber, used to bury burned and unburned human bones, suggesting its use in funerary rites. The passage is aligned to capture the winter solstice sunrise through a roof box, flooding the interior chamber with sunlight and highlighting the astronomical importance of the tomb. Archaeologists believe that Newgrange served a religious or ceremonial purpose, underlined by its complex art and architectural sophistication. The facade, predominantly made of white quartz boulders, and the presence of a surrounding stone circle further accentuate its ceremonial importance. The site's historical significance is deepened by its role in Irish mythology, believed to be a home to deities such as the Dagda and his son Angus. Mythological narratives indicate that Newgrange was not just a monument, but a central figure in stories of sovereignty and divinity, where the heavenly and terrestrial kingdoms met. Archaeological studies, especially those of Michael J. O'Kelly between 1962 and 1975, have been crucial in revealing the secrets of Newgrange. O'Kelly's reconstructions, such as restoring the front of the tomb to facilitate visitor access, although controversial, have helped preserve this ancient structure. Furthermore, Newgrange's art, with its engravings of spirals, arches and geometric patterns, shows an advanced understanding of design and symbolism. These engravings, mainly on the entrance stone and gunnel stones, are believed to have ritual significance beyond the decorative. Number 2. Sacsayhuaman, on the northern outskirts of Cusco, Peru, this massive complex rises to an altitude of 3,701 meters. Built in the 15th century under the leadership of the Sapa Inca Pacacotec and his successors, Sacsayhuaman's architectural achievements continue to raise questions about the capabilities of prehistoric civilizations. The structure is famous for its colossal dry stone walls, composed of enormous blocks cut so precisely that they fit together perfectly without the need for mortar. The precision is such that not even a piece of paper can slip between many of the stones. This technique not only highlights the Inca's advanced understanding of masonry, but also their ability to manipulate large stones to withstand the seismic activity that frequently shakes the region. The largest stone is estimated to weigh almost 200 tons and the question remains how they were transported and intricately carved using the limited technology available in that period. The fortress's strategic location on a steep hill offers a commanding view of the Cusco Valley, suggesting its use as a military bastion. However, the complexity and elegance of the stonework suggest that it also had a significant ceremonial role. The extensive plaza and large terraces with zigzag walls, which imitate the teeth of a puma, along with the alignment of the site with celestial events, show its spiritual importance to the Incas. The construction of Sacsayhuaman is notable considering that Inca builders primarily used bronze or stone tools. 
The Incas shaped the enormous stones with such precision that the walls have withstood centuries of natural disasters. Modern experiments, such as those of Vince Lee, have attempted to replicate the precision of the Incan masons, but achieving the accuracy of the stone joints remains difficult, increasing the mystery of their construction methods. Over the centuries, Sacsayhuaman has suffered looting and destruction, especially during the Spanish conquest, when many stones were reused to build the colonial city of Cusco. Today, only the largest stones remain, too heavy to be moved, allowing us to imagine the original grandeur of Sacsayhuaman. In the modern era, Sacsayhuaman has become a symbol of cultural pride. It is the setting for Inti Raymi, the Inca Winter Solstice Festival, which attracts thousands of tourists and locals who come to see Inca tradition and pay homage to the engineering of their ancestors. Number 3. Located in the Valley of Mexico, 40 kilometers northeast of modern Mexico City, Teotihuacan is a testament to the architectural prowess and urban planning of ancient Mesoamerican civilizations. Recognized for its monumental pyramids, such as the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, Teotihuacan was not built by the Mexica or Aztecs, but predates them by many centuries. At its peak, in the first half of the first millennium, it was the largest city in the Americas, home to more than 125,000 people and one of the six largest cities in the world at the time, covering an area of 20 square kilometers. Teotihuacan was the heart of the region, influencing far beyond its borders through trade, especially in obsidian tools, and culturally through its architectural and artistic innovations. The city was founded around 100 BC, with construction of its main monuments continuing until approximately 250 AD. However, around 550 AD, the city experienced significant destruction and was abandoned during the 7th and 8th centuries, possibly due to extreme weather events between 535 and 536. Teotihuacan's urban design centered on the Avenue of the Dead, connecting the main ceremonial and administrative places, including the pyramids. The Pyramid of the Sun, one of the largest in Mesoamerica, rises to more than 66 meters and was built with 3 million tons of stone, without metal tools, wheels or draft animals. The construction techniques used by the Teotihuacans are not yet fully understood. The pyramids had a board slope structure, with alternating inclined and vertical panels, providing stability and an impressive visual appearance. Internally, they were built with rubble, adobe bricks and a layer of lime plaster, which allowed them to withstand earthquakes common in the region. Despite its size and planning, there is no clear evidence of a centralized monarchy, suggesting that the city may have been a theocratic or collective state, evidenced by the lack of royal iconography and the predominance of communal religious symbolism. Teotihuacan's influence spread throughout Mesoamerica, as evidenced by artifacts found in distant places such as the Mayan lands and the Gulf Coast. After its decline, Teotihuacan influenced later civilizations, such as the Aztecs, who considered it the birthplace of the gods. Today, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that attracts millions of visitors to admire its pyramids and culture. Despite archaeological studies, many aspects of Teotihuacan remain mysterious including the reasons for its decline and the ethnicity of its inhabitants. The city's original name is also the subject of debate, with some theories suggesting that it was known as the City of the Sun rather than the City of the Gods. Number 4. Scientists have discovered a prehistoric structure that seemed impossible to have been created by man in the remote forests of southern Siberia. Within the region known as Gorneashoria lies a set of enormous stone blocks that have baffled researchers and historians alike. These gigantic formations, often compared in magnitude to the famous Baalbek stones in Lebanon, consist of several extraordinarily large boulders, 
estimated at over 3,000 to 4,000 tons. The Gornia Shoria megaliths are located in a region characterized by harsh climates and rugged terrain, making their access and detailed study difficult. The stones themselves exhibit straight edges and precise angles, suggesting a level of intentional shaping not typically found in natural rock formations. The precision in these cuts and the arrangement of the blocks raise important questions about the technologies and capabilities of ancient civilizations. These megaliths attracted worldwide attention at the beginning of the 21st century, although they had been known to local inhabitants for centuries. The recent interest in these megaliths is due in part to their large size and orderly arrangement, defying simple geological explanations. Unlike other megalithic sites known for their astronomical alignment or religious significance, the main intrigue here lies in their sheer scale and the technical challenge they represent. Various theories have been proposed about their origin, including the possibility that they are natural formations resulting from tectonic activity. However, the precision in the way they are cut and aligned suggests possible human intervention raising the idea of an ancient civilization with advanced stone carving skills. The absence of tools or other human remains near the site complicates verification of this theory, but also makes it difficult to completely rule out. This debate reflects broader discussions in archaeology about the capabilities of ancient cultures and challenges our understanding of human history. If confirmed to be man-made, these megaliths could represent a significant architectural achievement and a major revision of history as we know it. Number 5. The fortress city of Machu Picchu is one of the most charming discoveries made in Peru. This rock city was first discovered in 1911 by American historian and explorer Hiram Bingham. Since then, several fascinating discoveries have been made here but perhaps the most exciting of them was the secret door discovered in 2010. It was French engineer Thierry Jamin who first noticed this boarded-up door in the urban section of Machu Picchu. Excited to discover what mysteries were hidden behind those doors, Jamin contacted French explorer David Crespi to investigate. Crespi brought with him special equipment that used infrared rays to skim through the thick stones so he could at least know what was hidden behind that stone door. When they finally scanned it, what they discovered was quite surprising. Crespi and Jamin had located a special mausoleum that could be accessed by a staircase that started right from that door. It was believed to be the final resting place of Pakakutek, the Inca ruler who ordered the construction of Machu Picchu. However, the icing on the cake was that they also discovered a treasure trove of precious metals inside the mausoleum. Their excitement could not be contained, and wasting no time, Crespi and Jamin sent requests for permission to remove the stones covering the door and examine what was inside the cave. Unfortunately, his request was denied. Machu Picchu authorities claimed that removing the stones would compromise the integrity of the entire structure meaning the whole thing could collapse. And since they were not willing to take that risk, the excavation was cancelled. Number 6. At first glance, this may look like a mountain, but it is actually a 10 million ton rock known as La Piedra del Pinal or the Rock of Guadapi. This incredible monument is located near the border between Guadapi and El Pinal in Antioquia, Colombia. Rising more than 200 meters above the surrounding plains, Guadapi rock can be easily seen from afar. The rock's surface is almost completely smooth, with a long crack running up and down one face. Over the years, a staircase of 649 steps has been built into the rock, giving the appearance of a huge seam holding the divided rock together. Now, about the inscription on one of the sides of the rock, there is a quite interesting story behind it. Some time ago, the people of Guadapi decided to mark the rock with the name of their town. But while the project was underway, El Pinal residents, who also claimed the rock as their property, began protesting the painting. 
It wasn't long before a crowd formed and work stopped, but not before the G and the first stroke of the U had already been written. Number 7. The Great Pyramid of Cholula, in the ancient city of Puebla, in Mexico. A huge mountain has dominated the landscape for centuries, or at least that is what was thought. In reality, it is much more than a mountain. When Spanish explorer Hernán Cortés arrived at the ancient city, he took it with a firm hand, plundering it until almost no one was left to fight him. He then built a church on the top of this mountain, a church that is still there today. Unbeknownst to anyone, the mountain was actually hiding the largest pyramid in the world. Forget the Great Pyramid of Giza. This one is much bigger. For comparison, the pyramid in Egypt measures just over 230 meters at the base, with an original height of 138 meters, while the Cholula Pyramid is 66 meters high, but measures a staggering 450 meters at the base. Although the Pyramid of Giza is noticeably taller, the sheer size of the Cholula Pyramid surpasses the Egyptian monument effortlessly. However, the entire pyramid was made of mud, so over time it became covered with vegetation. Historians believe the construction took centuries to complete, with each generation adding their own architectural style to the monument. Today, it is recognized as the largest pyramid in the world, a monument so enormous that it was mistaken for a mountain. Number 8. The inland city of Laren is located in the Sahar Mountains, in Peru, at an altitude of 5,100 meters above sea level. It stands out as one of the most remote urban locations in the world. Most of its inhabitants they work in the local gold mines scattered around the area. However, living conditions in the city are poor. There is no sewage system, and garbage accumulates in the streets, or is incinerated. The roads are full of dirt and waste. Waste, while the water and soil are contaminated with mercury, used by locals in gold extraction. Even the glaciers that supply the city with water are contaminated and melting due to mining activity, raising the risk. Local temperature. Unfortunately, these conditions have caused the death of local animals, and the river that runs through the city lacks fish. Number 9. The city of Witter is located on the southern coast of Alaska, United States. Its distinctive characteristic is that 90% of its population resides in a single building called Pikes. This 14-story residential building used to be a military base in the 1950s, but currently houses civilians. The city has strategic relevance as a connection point, since a tunnel runs through it connecting Alaska with other regions of North America. In addition, it has an important port dedicated to transportation of merchandise, including fish and petroleum products, as well as an airport that connects it with other cities in the state. Number 10. Located in the province of Cádiz, in southern Spain, Sedano de las Bodegas is a charming town that extends along the Strait of the Triguero River. What distinguishes it from other places is its peculiar geography. Instead of being built on flat land or hills, Sedinal is wedged into low-lying terrain, surrounded by impressive cliffs and rock formations that rise above the city. This unique natural environment has inspired its inhabitants to artfully adapt rocks as an integral part of their architecture. In fact, many houses have roofs and walls formed by the rocks themselves, creating a truly picturesque and one-of-a-kind urban landscape. Walking through the narrow streets of Sedinal is like entering a fairy tale labyrinth, where each corner reveals a new visual surprise. In addition to its stunning natural beauty, the town is steeped in history and culture, with an atmosphere that invites visitors to immerse themselves in its traditional Andalusian charm. Thus, Sedano de las Bodegas stands out as a destination that harmoniously combines natural beauty with human creativity, offering a unique and memorable experience for all those who are lucky enough to visit it.